This is Alfie. He's one years old. He's completely desensitized to leash pressure, which is just what I'm going to show here. He doesn't respond to pressure at all because he has been pulling so fiercely for months. Even though he's been through some training classes and he knows his basic obedience and, and um, you know, he's the typical relatively all-around good dog, except for the nervousness he gets around other dogs where he pulls and snaps at them. It's seemingly out of nowhere. Um, he'll literally just sniff them and then snap at them and then he pulls really bad on the leash. So this is a great case to use treats in because this behavior of uh, snapping at other dogs has just come up and it's likely because of all the pulling or I know it's because of all the pulling it's uh, that tension has made him uncomfortable in general and treats actually center him really nicely they don't overexcite him they help him focus so this is a, an example of when I would use a lot of positive reinforcement a lot of treat training so you see I am using corrections because leash pressure is not going to do anything in this case. He's already been pulling so much. If you've seen some of my leash pressure videos, you know how I go about doing that. And I could reprogram him with a prong, but because of his age and because this was actually uh, a more minor issue, I chose just to stick with uh, uh, using a slick leash. Right now he's just on his flat collar. I just wanted to see how he would do with corrections on it. And he did great. It's because no one had ever corrected him before. And by doing that, I was able to get through to him quickly. He understood what I wanted and he started to stay right with me. And every time I stopped, he started sitting consistently. We did this in an area that had no distractions except for just the, the brush around us um, and of course the owners. Um, no distractions for about 15 minutes and the thing is they live in a very busy area where there are a lot of dogs and they won't be working with him on weekends anytime soon but this was a weekend so you're going to get to see just a, an overwhelming amount of people and dogs which is not something I suggest when you first start off but um, it's good for you guys to be able to, to, to see the process in action and, and how it works. So here I'm just slipping to a switching to a slip collar so I can hold it higher on his neck that's really important for um, dealing with with other dogs because I want to have control of his head I don't want him to have a chance to be able to uh, to snap at another dog the goal is to keep him at a calm enough level um, to where he doesn't snap at other dogs and I can redirect him with positive reinforcement a treat um, to help change how he feels around about dogs and that way, if he does snap at another dog, if he does escalate that quickly, I am right there so I can correct him um, with the slip lead, you know, higher up on his neck than just a flat collar or, or a harness. So here just doing, I'm just showing a little bit more obedience. The One of the owners is a huge distraction because she's a source of excitement right there. So you can see that's more difficult for him to keep up with me because he wants to go to her. And that's another thing too, when you when you overexcite dogs and you just represent excitement, it can get difficult um, to, to control them in any environment. Yes. Now the thing about Alfie is he does horrible with petting. You cannot reward him with physical petting whatsoever. If you do, um, he immediately pops up, jumps up on you, he'll start to whine. He's that sensitive. And honestly, it's because that part of him has been over nurtured. So what we're doing is when he looks at another dog without reacting, he gets a treat, okay? Um, now, if he looks at him too intensely, I, I will correct him before I redirect with food. But if he just calmly looks at another dog, like look at that, his ears are back, he's sniffing. I mark that behavior with a yes, and then I treat him. Um, so they're called, they're called marker words. You can also use good, that's fine too. Um, good, treat, yes, treat. So every time he looks at another dog, calmly, doesn't react, it's yes and treat. And I didn't ask him to lay down right there. He did that on his own because he was, he was calming down. So a lot of people here, a lot of excitement. So I correct him and have him sit. And I refocus him while this dog sniffs him. Loose leash, but there's only like two inches of slack. So I'm ready. And I didn't have to correct him. He stayed focused on me. That dog had really good energy. So it was a really good situation. So we gradually, over the course of an hour, hour and a half, went to uh, more and uh, more distractions and we did give him breaks that's, that's really important okay. um, 
So here I correct him, have him sit because he popped up with the excitement behind him. Now I'm just constantly refocusing him. We're surrounded by people and dogs and anytime he gets too excited or hops up, that was, a, that was not really a correction, that was more of a cue for him just to sit and, uh, and he did right away, which was really nice. We've got barking going on around us. You can see he gets a, a little escalated, but in, in this case, treats really refocus him so well. They don't um, overstimulate him like they do with some dogs. So right here, some off-leash pitties want to say hi, and he starts to growl. And I did not, I'm not holding him down. I'm sorry you can't see, because if I had physically used my palm and held him, I would have made the situation worse. I just firmly use my fingertips to hold them in place against my leg. Sometimes with puppies um, that are a little bit on the nervous side, if you just show their rear end to other dogs and the other dogs sniff the puppy, the puppy realizes, oh, there's no reason to be nervous and they actually calm down. I knew that Alfie wouldn't snap at me and I had a good feeling that, that this would work, that I wouldn't need to correct him or move him away. It was actually a great, uh, great opportunity to show him that these dogs just want to sniff you and it actually built a positive experience out of it and kept him nice and calm. Dogs that have a higher level of reactivity, that would not have worked on. I would have needed to do a strong correction to settle him down, or more likely, since those dogs were off leash, move away and then slowly reintroduce them back into that same spot, even if the dogs are long gone, just to reestablish a calm effect around the area. But I didn't have to do that with Alfie. And you really want to avoid the, the strong eye contact. That's what you want to correct and redirect because it's that strong eye contact dog to dog that creates issues, sometimes even with the most friendly of dogs. You want them relaxed so they can sniff and behave. If you have a dog that's more intense, you can't just throw them into this intense of a situation from the start. Um, you have to start with space and gradually work your way in. But you also need a comprehensive program in the house as well. You know, on thresholds, no bolting out of doors, place command, you know, sit down, waiting calmly for food, and so on. Just, just lots of things that create a, a calmer state of mind in general. Now, if you have any questions, you can email me at info at doggersizela.com or check out our website, doggersizedogtraining.com. Have a good one.